So I'm going to uh, provide an overview of the Uni University of Toronto's family medicine programs, progress in CBME. This is my con conflict of interest slide, which basically says I have none. Uh, by way of background, the family medicine program uh, in Canada is a two-year uh, training program with an optional third year in an area of focused practice. We at the University of Toronto have one of the largest family medicine programs in Canada with over 350 postgraduate trainees in a two-year program and an additional 52 postgraduate trainees in a third year or enhanced skills program. Uh, in addition to that, to add to the complexity, we utilize 14 distributed urban sites in a rural residency program. We have between 18 and 40 residents uh, at each site, eight in the rural program, and the residents stay there uh, for the entire residency. Uh, during the course of their two-year two -year program, they have multiple uh, four-week rotations with a continuity component in family medicine. So they have a minimum of four months of family medicine and at least one and a half day back in family medicine when they're on uh, off-service rotations. Uh, in addition to that, to add to the context even more, we have over 1,200 faculty with only about 25% of them being full-time. So when we started this process, just like in orthopedics, we looked at the CFPC uh, template that they provided. And these are the three areas that we address. Uh, we looked at our curriculum and had to rewrite in competency-based language. Then we had to look at our uh, resources, including faculty, as well as our learning opportunities, uh, both clinical and academic. And then finally, we had to look at our assessments uh, that we had in place uh, and develop new ones to address um, uh, components of the curriculum. So this is the timeline that we use. We started off in about 2007. From 2007 to 2009, uh, we developed the, uh, uh, the, the essential learning outcomes for graduation. Uh, that took a number of years. We used a, a systematic process involving our faculty, residents, uh, and uh, uh, experts in education like Dr. Glover Takahashi uh, to help develop the competencies. We had multiple reviews and approval processes that, uh, that the curriculum went through. Um, in 2009, we introduced a, uh, a written test, in, uh, a, a progress test. Uh, that was a bit of a challenge for family medicine because uh, in contrast to uh, other uh, specialty programs at the University of Toronto, uh, a written test during residency was not done before and, and, and it wasn't done in any program in Canada. In 2011, uh, we developed an electronic field note system, and I'll talk about field notes uh, a little bit later. And we also introduced new and training evaluation reports that were in line with the competency-based curriculum. And then over the last few years, uh, we've been looking at uh, standardizing our progress reviews. Uh, and uh, in 2016, so just uh, July of this year, uh, we introduced a standard progress review form. Um, one of the uh, challenges in our distributed program is that our sites um, have different rotations. So they, they may, in terms of length and sometimes even in terms of content. And so what we had to do was we had to get all our sites to map their competencies uh, or the lear learning outcomes to all, all their rotations to ensure that they're all being covered. As far as assessment goes, these are the, the standard assessments that we, uh, uh, we use in family medicine at this point. Uh, they're broken down to work-based and then other forms. The work-based assessments are, include field notes. So our field notes are a way for us to document uh, feedback from direct observations. And those, it's expected that those are provided every time a resident is, is working with us in a clinic. We also have crit critical incident report forms. That those are uh, essentially, those essentially deal with uh, uh, issues around professionalism and they are uh, attached to the field notes. So if there is a critical incident, a faculty member can complete a, a, a form which provides more detail uh, than would be provided in a, in a general field note. We also have our residents complete a resident practice profile. So they, every patient that they see in their family medicine clinics, they document. And then we can look at what they've seen to ensure that they have a comprehensive clinical experience. And if they're not having that, then we can supplement that, either by changing their uh, booking schedules or by advising them uh, to, um, to participate in, in certain uh, electives or selectives. Uh, we also have the uh, in-training uh, evaluation reports that are completed monthly. Um, so those are our work-based um, uh, work, work assessments. The FM map is our progress test, so it's delivered twice a year, in November and March of each year, and the residents get a report back a couple of weeks later, um, comparing them to their cohort uh, in terms of their ability to, to apply their knowledge to, to cases in the test. 
the progress reviews occur every six months. The site director or a delegate meets with all the residents uh, to review all their assessments and to make a judgment about where they are in the program. Are they progressing or are they not progressing? And then they also are all expected to complete uh, PG acquired modules. All residents at the University of Toronto uh, post grad program are expected to complete. And those deal largely with the intrinsic uh, CanMed's roles. The, the other thing that, that, uh, that we do is we assess our residents in difficulty a little bit differently. So there are added assessments for those who get into difficulty. Those include a sort of a straight knowledge test that they write at the beginning and at the end, um, as well as an OSCE that they do at the beginning and at the end to make sure uh, that they, they've achieved uh, what was expected of them during the remediation period. This is our field note, and again, it's, it's a, a uh, a way for us to document uh, direct uh, document feedback from direct observation. The field note itself is tagged by a number of parameters. One is the type of clinical case that they've seen. So we want to make sure that they've been assessed across a, a spectrum of clinical conditions. And then the other tag it has to do with the CAMEDS FM roles um, and the six skill dimensions uh, for a family physician uh, developed by the College of Family Physicians of Canada. Um, as far as reporting goes, all residents ha can see a report like this that tells them where, how, many, how many field notes they have completed for the various CANMEDS FM roles and six skill dimensions. Um, and we can also track over time uh, how much supervision they need uh, as they progress through, through the program. So in terms of preparing faculty for this, um, we have a faculty development program centrally and locally. Essentially, it's called basic. So all our new teachers have to take part in, in the program. Um, and there are a number of sessions delivered to them uh, around competency-based education, post-grad, all the forms they need to complete. Um, so, so that's delivered there. And then there's also a post-basics program that you do about six months later, where they come back and sort of reflect on, um, you know, on how things went and, and uh, what challenges they may have encountered uh, with, with our curriculum specifically. We've also developed electronic tools for our, uh, uh, for our faculty. This allows them uh, to uh, easily uh, track feedback that they've given and it allows them to also follow up on feedback that they may have given. Um, and it also provides the central program with alerts for residents who are experiencing some difficulty. Uh, we also send out monthly reports to our site directors to make sure that they're aware of how many uh, assessments have been completed uh, per resident and who the faculty are completing those. Um, and if there are issues around that, they can be addressed locally. Um, as far as preparing residents, direct observation has always been in our program. It dates back to before I was a resident, which is a long time ago. Um, and so it wasn't a big sort of sell, both for faculty and residents, that they needed to be observed. The difference is the amount of time and the number of forms that they have to complete. And that's a, the that's a challenge. So we've seen a gradual increase in the number of field notes that have been completed. Uh, since we've transitioned to CBME. Um, and I think that needs to go further. And, and uh, um, the other thing that, that we, we, you know, we've learned is that residents are really appreciative of feedback. They want to see it. Uh, they want it sent to them. So we send it to them. When a field notice is completed, it gets, uh, once it's submitted, it gets emailed to them. Our challenges with, introduction, with, with the introduction uh, of CBME uh, with respect to residents was really when we introduced new assessment tools. Uh, and and the, the, the main one was, was progress testing. They weren't used to uh, having written tests in residency, um, and so we involved them early on in discussions about how to implement that. We, we involved them in discussions about how to report it to site directors, what information should be provided, and I think that, that really helped. Involving residents uh, at every stage of the process was really helpful, because when we didn't do that, uh, there was a lot of resistance. So, the, the, um, in closing, the change to CBME in family medicine um, has been a process uh, which continues uh, to be modified and improved, and I don't think that's uh, ever going to change. Thank you.